Hey everyone, welcome to Safety Optional. I know we haven't recorded a video in a long time, and we're working on that, but you know, life and things get in the way. But today, uh, in this video, we're kind of going on a special mission. I uh, am going to look at, and I'm probably going to end up buying, a, uh, a special Jeep, yet another project to work on. So I know that I have a bad track record with finishing projects, but this one, this one's a special one. Um, you see, some uh, longtime family friends told me that they are finally considering selling their uh, old Jeep Cherokee. And of all the old used Jeep Cherokees in the world that I would consider buying, this is probably the only one um, out there. And I have known this particular vehicle since they bought it. And I'm pretty sure they bought it new. And um, they have a cabin out by ours. They've been lifelong family friends. And so um, I've seen this, this Cherokee ever since I was a little kid, since before I could drive. And it is a 1991 Jeep Cherokee Briarwood. And just the fact alone that it's a Briarwood, which is pretty dang rare, uh, makes it desirable. But the fact that these people had it, um, and I've seen it and grown up knowing um, this particular Cherokee, and the fact that uh, between Eric, Matt, Colin, and myself, we know how to take apart a Jeep and put it all back together. I mean, there's just one vehicle we know, it's the XJ and MJ Jeeps. So, we're gonna take a look at it. I've got Declan with me. We're gonna go and uh, check it out and see if we can get it on the trailer and bring it home. So follow along with us. All right, here it is. Got it home. I didn't record loading it because it took forever with come alongs to pull on there. And I kind of want to be respectful to the awesome people that, uh, um, that this belonged to where we got it. Um, but here she is. This is uh, the new project. 1991 Jeep Cherokee Briarwood. Like I said, I've known this Jeep for a long time and I'm super stoked to get to work on it. But we already know it has some issues. So let's talk about that real quick. So we know that, um, that it doesn't start and um, we're kind of iffy on how well it's gonna run once we do get it started. Um, but first order of business is going to be to pull the battery out and uh, replace the battery and see if we can get it cranked. And if we can get it started, we're going to leave it on the trailer until we can get it running. And then we'll uh, back it back off the trailer and start working on it. Annoying cicada, stop. Get out of here, cicada. So the plan for phase one is to just see if we can get it cranking, maybe see if we can get it started, maybe drive it off the trailer. But we know it hasn't driven anywhere in over a year, probably hasn't even started in a year. And what little driving it's done over the past several years has been minimal. So this thing's basically been parked for a handful of years. So we're gonna play it easy, but all the fluids look pretty good. So I don't think we need to go and freak out right off the bat and change a bunch of things. First, we just wanna make sure we get it running. The one thing that does concern me is the gas. Just because I've gone through that with my 90 Jeep Cherokee after it sat for a while. Um, <clears throat> the fuel gelled up in the injectors and they didn't open. And so I had to send them off, have them rebuilt. You can watch my other video about that. Um, I'm hoping we don't have that issue with this one. We're definitely going to see if we can um, take the fuel line off and, and make sure that the, we purge the fuel system, get fresh ethanol free gas in the tank before we drive it very far. Um, but we're gonna roll the dice um, this afternoon and just see if we can get it to crank first. So I mentioned um, at the beginning that this Jeep just has a special place in my heart. The, the people 
who this belonged to were just some of the sweetest, kindest, um, best people that I know. And so we're going to, we want to honor them and everything that we do with this Jeep. And we're going to preserve this just as it is. This is a fantastic example of a really high quality original Jeep Cherokee. Um, it's the top of the line model, the Briarwood edition. And a little bit about that, if you didn't know, when they first came out with the Jeep Cherokee, um, the XJ platform, they also had the Wagoneer, which was the upscale version. Uh, in fact, my, uh, my dad had one when I was a kid. Um, but in 91, they started, uh, they eliminated the Wagoneer and they created the Briarwood, which is similar to the Wagoneer and it's got the wood trim, upgraded interior, leather interior, um, wood paneling on the inside. Um, so this was the top of the line Jeep Cherokee that you could get in 1991. And it is so original, it's just fantastic. And so the hope is to get this thing running, keep it just like it is and preserve it and just enjoy it for what it is. A look inside. And it's not as bad as you would think. And I will say right now, it does not smell bad at all in here. It actually smells pretty good. Look, the headliner's not even sagging. I know the headliner's been redone, but it looks spectacular. It really just smells like old leather seats, old upholstery. Um, and you can tell these seats have just been sitting out in the sun for forever. They've just been baked. We're definitely gonna have to have them redone or replaced. I'd like to keep them if we can. They've got these awesome side bolsters, but that also means finding a tip, like a, just a slip on cover is gonna be real difficult. We're also gonna need a new steering wheel and horn cover. Um, this one's just worn out, but again, hopefully we can find one. I've done some looking already, but finding a beige one is a bit of a trick. 140,000 miles on the odometer. But look at that awesome wood grain dash there. That is just beautiful. Original cassette deck, original AC, cigarette lighter. Um, it's got the uh, power rear wiper, fog lights, stock, heated rear window. These are things that my 90 model Pioneer uh, Cherokee doesn't have cruise control, intermittent wipers, tilt steering wheel, and this has the command track MP242 um, transfer case. So it has the part-time four-wheel drive and full-time four-wheel drive. And it has power mirrors, center console. It's got power locks. And it's even got the cool Cherokee in the uh, um, under the window there. And just look at the wood trim on those doors. Just pristine. We'll have to see if the uh, computer and the temp works. I have a feeling that the um, remote door lock didn't work. They um, previous owners lost the uh, fob and as typical with a lot of cars like this, the uh, rear view mirror's fallen off and is gonna have to be re-glued on there. But inside of this, just gorgeous, pristine. I am so excited. A lot of people may not be fans, but I just love these wheels. Unfortunately, they're a little bit worse for wear um, with the finish coming off. We're gonna have to see if we can get those refinished. And check out these running boards. Those are for original from the dealer. Check these out. Factory Jeep fog lights, original. Let's see if I can get it even get it to come off. I bet they've never been used. Just completely original with the covers and everything. And there is a dent here because I stupidly hooked the come along to this to winch it onto the trailer. That dent will come right out. And if it doesn't, I've got a spare bumper to put on it. Of course, the tires, eh, they're going to have to be replaced. Just look at that wood, that wood siding. 
golly we're definitely going to preserve that patina back here is just great it's got the uh, factory tow hitch on it which is fantastic and i know a lot of you xj guys are wondering 91 it's got the uh, dana 35 rear end even came with a wasp nest in the uh, trailer hitch there one uh, unfortunate thing is that it was hit it looks like it was hit and this was replaced um and uh dented here and so the previous owner put uh, foam in here just to kind of keep it sealed up we may have to see about if there's a paintless dent repair way to get this dent pulled out um, but we're not going to make that a priority because it really works fine right now but uh, when we get to just really polishing it up we'll have to fix that the uh these things we're going to just pull off and and uh, get rid of the rubber from the uh whatever roof rack deal here um don't need that and then it's got this sweet spoiler on the back uh, which i think what i'm told that, that uh, it was supposed to do was direct wind down the back glass here maybe to help keep the dust and stuff off of it sounds like a novel idea i don't know how well it works of course the uh, gas struts are dead in the back no surprise it has two factory jeep xj um, back mats in it and it has a full size spare And of course, once we get her off the trailer, get her running, we're going to do a full detail of it, clean all that leaf litter and all that debris off of it. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. See that latch? Reach under. Nope. Nope. Reach under like this. And pull it like that. Nope. Flatten your hand out. And reach under like that and slide your hand over until you feel the latch. There you go. Now raise it up. Good. Now find the rod over there. The hood strut. Okay. Push up until you can put it in the hole. Alright. There are multiple holes you can put it in. Where's the battery? Right there. Alright. We first moved this. That's not going to be a problem. I can put it right here. Get the. It's uh, supposed to be here. Yep. We Let's, need to read <clears throat> don't worry about that. We can duct tape it. No, we're not going to worry about that. I just need Grab to a wrench, though, so we can take the battery out. Hmm. So Declan's going to go ahead and take the battery out. Because we know that part's bad. But while we're in here, let's just look at the rest of this thing. All the relays and fuses look good, nice, clean. The tab's broken off, that's not a big deal. Wait, I'm not turning it the wrong way. Cruise control is all intact, it looks like. All the vacuum hoses surprisingly look good. There's no oil leak from the uh, oil pressure sending unit, which is remarkable. The motor mounts look like they're in good shape. I'm gonna go ahead and already bet that the uh, AC compressor is bad, but all the hoses for everything look really good and clean. Spark plug wires look like they're in pretty good shape. I already looked at the oil but the oil, nice and clean, perhaps a little overfilled, or a lot overfilled. Trans fluid, just a beautiful pink, just beautiful. <clears throat> Over on this side, look, the nice, green coolant in there 
fresh blue fluid for wiper fluid. Good clean power steering fluid. <laughs> yep. Brakes look good. Got the screw. Got the bolt. Okay. Time for the other one. I don't know where my own. Stock air box. Let's see what the air filter looks like. Oh wow. And there's a lot of debris down there in the air box. That's the air filter? But the air filter doesn't look that bad. We'll replace it just out of good measure later. But replace the battery, the wheels, the fuel, and the air filter. We're gonna do a full Tune up on this thing, Declan. There we go. So, step one change the battery. All right, because anything worth doing is worth doing right, we're going to vacuum in here and clean out all this debris before we put the battery in. And then we're going to blow it out real good just to make sure there's nothing left. Right here, at least. Put in the battery. We have it right here. We just got it and some other stuff. I'm really bad at holding batteries like this. Yep. Just hold the camera, okay? I know. So positives on that side. Make sure the positive terminal is that direction. Drop it in. So the best part about this battery, it's got a go handle. And it says extreme. Sounds like it, it's not third. Looks like fuel's low. Looks like the oil pressure gauge. Don't know if it works or not. All right, we need to take apart the column and figure that part out. Great. Well. Clearly, she ain't working, right? Let's see if all the signals are working. You know, they're flashing, so all the bulbs work. But that's a problem. And we've stumbled upon one area where my Jeep Cherokee knowledge falls short. <clears throat> I know the buzzing sound's coming from that, but unplugging it only makes the buzzing sound just go away. It does not deactivate the uh, security system in any way. But my Jeep that I'm used to working on is a 1990, not a 91. <clears throat> and I had the what security features it, it had on it just activated uh, a long time ago. <clears throat> So I'll have to do a little Google. But, hey, well, we got the battery plugged in. Let's see. Well, they appear to kind of halfway work, but they're all jammed. That figures they need to be taken apart in grease. Nothing on the windows. Hey, power seat works. Put the key in and try and see what else works. Of 
blower works. Radio does not. Wipers do work, that's good. Power mirror, no. Trip computer, no. Front dome reading lamps don't, but the back dome lamps do. All right, well, we're starting to learn about it. But obviously I'm gonna have to do a little Google Foo to figure out what is, uh, how to defeat the security system on this thing. So, if you know, drop a comment, let me know. I'm gonna do a little Googlefication and we'll get back to you. So I just wanna thank you for joining in and uh, following along with us. This is gonna be a fun project. Um, it's gonna be a multi, multi, multi part series. Maybe I'll get this working before we get the V8 swapped Comanche going. I hope. But I just want to thank you for joining me here on Safety Optional. I'll see you next time.